Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome and thank you for stopping by. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. If you like the tutorials that I'm putting out, make sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Also, if you want to be notified the minute I have up new tutorials, just hit the bell and you'll be notified as soon as they're posted. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make wine bottle labels. And this is one that I made for a, an upcoming wedding. I'm going to show you how to make this blank one so that you can um, add anything, any, any other design or decorative element to it you want, and you'll be able to personalize it any way that you would like. So first of all, I'm going to make a blank sheet by clicking here on this first icon to get a new sheet and it will automatically be in the landscape position and I'm going to bring up this crown and I found this crown by going to the internet and I'll show you now you just go to the internet I typed in um, Stella Rosa crown As you can see, hit enter. It brought it. It brought me to this page. Then I just hit um, images. Scroll down a little bit, and there it was. I clicked on it. It has the background showing me that it's a PNG, and also it will say PNG when you save it. You just right click on it. Choose save image as. Choose where you want to save it. I save it to my desktop click save you can give it a new name if you want and then click save and it will save it wherever the directory is that you chose to save it to now i'll click back on picture it and then all i did was go to file open went to my desktop there was the image click on the image choose open and it will open I already have it open, so it'll just tell you I already have it open on the screen. Now, to get started with making the design. Now, the, the wedding that I was making the design for was rose gold and champagne. And so I just looked up just paint splotches or, or um, paint tiles or paint colors on the Internet. I just typed in rose gold and I typed in champagne. And so these colors came up um, that are within that family. And what I need to do, what I'm trying to do is make this gradient right here, this, and it make it look like it's kind of shimmery. So I'm going to show you quickly how I do that. You take, and you could do this with any two colors, just make sure that they contrast well enough where one is light pretty light and the other one is a darker color. Now I'm going to show you how to make this gradient. So I'm going to show you in this example and then I'm going to stretch this to the fill up the whole page so I can use it in my design. So first I'm going to go here to I'm going to make sure I've chosen the, the rectangle that I want to change. I'm going to go to paint and color effects, fill with the gradient, and then here it says custom two-tone color gradient. So this way I can make it with the colors, the two colors that I chose. All these colors are preset and you can choose any one of those. And as you can see, it'll change that one side, which is the left side of my rectangle or shape. But if you want to make a custom shape, you click on more start color choices. So I click here, and then I'm going to click in my color patch that I have here. And you always want the darker color first for the gradient that I want to arrive at, the shimmery gradient. I'm going to hit Done, and now I'm going to click on the bottom one. So your right will always be the light color. So 
Just remember that when you want to make your gradient look shimmery. Next, I'm going to hit done and done again. And now here, I want to come down to style, scroll down just a little bit to the third row. The last one in the third row is the gradient I'm looking for. So I'm going to click that and it automatically gives me this shimmery look. So now I'm going to click done. I can delete these colors because I have my gradient and I'm just going to fill up the whole page with this now. And I have the perfect gradient for my project. Now I'm going to make myself a brand new page by clicking here on this first icon. And if you hover over it long enough, it will say new and it will give you this flat canvas in landscape mode to work on. I'm going to drag up my crown by clicking on it with my left button and then I'm just going to drag it and drop it the image here. Now you can make this crown large if you want. Just consider this whole width the label. So if you want to have um, a large crown, you just pull out from any corner, never from the inside because it takes it out of proportion. I'm going to hit a back arrow because I just wanted to show you how horrible that looks out of proportion. And if you want to resize something and picture it, always resize from any corner because it will keep the proportions of the picture. So if you want a large crown on your label, you just stretch it out large and just imagine if this were on a wine bottle, this crown would be going probably a little bit on the sides if you were using the largest wine bottle. If you're using the smaller bottles, it would wrap all the way around it, just about all the way around to the sides. So I want it just about this big and I'm just eyeballing it. If you want exact measurements, I'll, I have the exact measurements for the small bottle and you can easily resize it up to the large and I'll show you that when we get to Cricut. So I have my crown here. Next, I want to make the body of the label. So I'm going to go here to cut out in picture, add a colored shape and hit done. It doesn't matter what color it is because we're going to change it in a minute anyway to our gradient. So let's say I want a, a label about this, this wide. So I'm going to take that all the way across. And then I'm going to put my crown about there. So I know I want my curve to come in here. So I'm going to go once again to cut out in picture add a colored shape. This time I'm going to change it to a circle and hit done. And I'm going to drag my circle down one layer so it'll be under the crown. So I'm going to put this up where I want it. And I just want a little, a little curve on there. I'm going to bring this in a little bit because I don't want it too wide. I, I want it to be just enough to enhance that crown area. And it don't it doesn't matter that this is showing down here. We'll get rid of that. But I'm just trying to put my little uh, curved edge right in the area exactly where I want it. So it'll look like it's about the same measurement all the way around. And I think that looks pretty good, even though this point is up closer. I still think that looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, I think that works. And now I'm going to click on my crown. You can click anywhere in the actual crown. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the back. And I'm going to go here to cut out in picture. Cut out of picture with the cookie cutter shape and I'm going to use my square. I'm going to go to the top of the screen because I want to be above my curve, but I want to be on top of the rectangle portion 
because I don't want that curve at the bottom. So I'm going to just fit it around there so that I have this flat edge at the bottom. I'm going to hit next and done. Then I'm going to get rid of the original rectangle and the original circle. And now all I have is this piece and my crown. Now while the crown is hidden under there, I'm going to cut this out one more time. Let me put that back where I had it. And I'm going to go once again and cut it out again. Now this time it doesn't matter where I put my square as long because all of this white area is empty anyway. So it doesn't matter where I put it. It's going to just cut out this section. And I'm going to hit next and done. So now as you can see here in my layers panel, I have two of my original label shapes and my crown. To get this edge that I have around this label, I need to make a new gradient. So I'm going to go back, uh, go back to my original label and I'm going to go here and I'm going to make one more blank sheet. And I'm going to go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape, change it to a square, hit done. Now I'm going to go once again to paint and color effects, fill with the gradient. And right here in the second row, you see these silver bars. So I'm going to click on the silver bars. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down on style, click on that point, and it gives me that metallic sunburst pattern. And I'm going to hit done. And now I'm just going to drag this out to one edge and then just pull it on any side because this isn't going to change how good this looks. It still will keep the, keep a, the basic proportions. And now I have my silver gradient so I can make my edge on my label. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on this top one and we'll move it to the bottom layer after we change it. I'm going to go to cut out and picture, fill cut out or picture with the picture, and then I'm going to drag that gradient up. Now move that gradient around until you get the shades that you want. If I put it up that high, it's going to make these really dark and they're not, it's not going to blend in well with the top. So I'm going to pull this all the way down until I have the shiniest, brightest portion. And then I'm going to pull out on the side so you can see it stretches that brightness out more. You can zoom out a little bit until you get the brightness where you want it. And I think that's pretty good. So I'll zoom back in. So this is looking good. I like how bright that looks. I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to take my blue shape and I'm going to drag it back to the top, the blue, the original blue label. I'm going to drag it back to the top. Next, I'm going to click on the silver one that we just made and I'm going to click in the middle of that chosen silver one and just drag it up a little bit so that it shows on the edge of my blue label. And because I want this to all look about the, the same uniform thickness, I'm going to pull out on the side a little bit just so that I can stretch my edge of the circle or the half circle or the curve so that I can make it look like it's all the same on all sides. So you, now you can see it looks just about the same on all sides. Now we still need to cover this bottom if we want this edge all the way around. So if you want that edge all the way around, you're just going to pull up that original silver gradient or whatever color you decide to make yours. And then you're going to drag it down one layer so that it's under the original layer. And once again, you're going to resize by pulling on the sides until you get it to the brightness you want it. And you can check the brightness by clicking out. And if it's not where you want it, just click on it again, reposition it because it wasn't down far enough. And I need to center that a little more and I'm just eyeballing this. And now that looks about right. That looks about right. So we have both edges 
if this needs to come down or go up more, you can do all of that just uh, by dragging on whichever side you need. Like I said, this one will look good regardless if you stretch it out or or shrink it down. And I'm just trying to eyeball again this the same thickness as the top so it'll look like it, it's just going all the way around. So now I'm going to click on this silver edge. And since I can't click on the silver edge on the bottom, I'm going to click it here in the layers panel. And then I'm going to group those pieces. And I'm going to add a shadow around them by going to special effect shadow. And I'm going to hit a drop shadow. I'm going to resize it and then position it so that I just have just a little bit of shadow going around the top and the bottom. And I think that looks good, but I want to lighten it up a little bit so it looks more like a shadow and less like a, a hard edge. I can soften it a little bit by clicking on soften, but I don't want to soften it too much because it'll make my edge look ragged. So I think that looks good right there. I might, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. So now that's looking good to me. So now we just need to tackle this portion. And you see our crown is still on that bottom layer. So you don't want to uh, get rid of that. But if you do, you still have, you know, your copy over here. So now I'm going to click on the inward uh, label, the blue label. And I'm going to go once again to cut out in pictures. Feel cut out our picture with the picture. This time I'm going to drag up that rose gold gradient that we made and drop it in. And I can shrink this down some. It, it really doesn't affect it that much. But that looks good. I'm going to hit done. Now we're going to bring our crown up. I'm going to click on that bottom layer and just drag the crown up to the top and move it up back into its original position. Now if you want to make this gold, this edge gold like I did in the original, I had a, a gold color. So I'll click back over to it. You're going to click on that edge and you're going to go here to touch up, correct tint, and we're just going to drag it toward the gold. And to intensify that gold a little bit, drag our slider toward the gold side. And you see it intensifies it a little bit. So I basically I'm trying to match it to this gold. And as you can see, it's just about there right now. So I'm going to hit done and I'm going to come out of that. And now I can darken this a little bit and see if, see if it'll make it look a little better. So I'm going to click on it. Go to paint and color effect, change color, and just do a few clicks down on the brightness, darkness uh, function here. I just did a few clicks down, and now it really seems to be matching the original crown here. And I can intensify it a little bit, saturate, uh, intensify the saturation by clicking up on the middle sliders which is the saturation set function and i'm going to hit done now on the, my original one i put this kente pattern along the bottom and you'll see why once i go into cricut um, but i wanted it to match the grooms these are this i made for uh, proposal boxes for a bride and groom these were going in the bride's box and i wanted to make it match the groom's box so I added this little kente pattern. So now I'll go back to the label we're making. And now you have your label that you can design any way you want. You can change the colors up like I showed you how to change the gradients. So now you can make these match any, any decor, any uh, theme that you would like. To bring this crown out a little bit, I would add a... A shadow to it so to add a shadow you just click on it go to special effects shadow and you can click soft shadow and it will instantly put a, a dark shadow around the 
complete outer edge. I'm going to hit done. And now I'm going to brighten this up because it darkened it a little bit. So I'm going to, while I still have the crown chosen, I'm going to go to paint and color effects, change color, which we've been using all for this entire project. And then I'm just going to click on the brightness and it's going to bring that gold out more, make it stand out. You can hit saturation a couple of times to increase the gold in the crown and hit done. And now you can leave it just like that. But I usually like to add a little extra shadow on there. Let's see what I did in this one. Yeah, I guess I didn't. I, I didn't do it in that one. But to make it stand out even more, if this wasn't enough for you, I have a little trick that I just figured out one day uh, to keep this shadow around and add an additional shadow. If you went back to touch up, I mean, special effects and shadow, it would change this shadow. So you couldn't have two shadows. I couldn't have this uh, outer edge shadow and then do a drop shadow. So in order to do the drop shadow, I have to add an extra shape. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the, to the crown. I'm going to go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape. It doesn't matter which shape you choose because you're going to shrink it down and you're going to fit it in the thickest area of your image that you want the extra shadow around. You can see the soft shadow around here in these areas. So I'm going to shrink that down as small as I can make it so that it won't show once I change the layer. So I'm going to click on it in my layers panel and drag it back one layer. And now when I click out, you can't see the little square, but it's there. So now I'm going to drag from the top of the crown just to include the crown and that little square. And now you see the little square and the big square around the crown. And I'm going to group those. This doesn't act like Cricut. If I did that in Cricut, it would choose everything. But when you're in Picture It, you can just drag across as long as you're not um, outside of all the images. When you drag, you will just get the, the images that are just in the little area where you choose to drag. Now, while that I've grouped them, I'm going to go back to special effects shadow and this time I'm going to choose a drop down shadow. Now it, it, it does its own drop down automatic, but then you can adjust it by clicking on it, holding, and then you can drag it whichever way you want. You can make it a offset from the top or the bottom, but I just want to drag it down just a little bit for, uh, toward the bottom so it will make it stand out that much more. And now when I zoom out, you can see it really well. I can brighten it up a bit more by going in back into paint and color effects and just brighten it a little bit so it brings that goal back out again, but it still keeps that drop down shadow. And now you're ready to personalize it any way you want. Add flowers, your wording. You can add extra design, an extra design here at the bottom if you want it to but this teaches you how to make the basic label. Now I'll show you how to cut it out in Cricut. You're going to choose upload, upload image, browse. You're going to see, find your design in the, in the directory, wherever you saved it. I saved mine to the desktop. Click on it. As you can see, it already has the background cut away. You're going to choose complex because simple or moderate would change the colors. So always choose complex when you're uploading your own graphics. Choose continue. Zoom out if you want so you can see how it's looking. Hit continue again. It has the name I gave it in, in uh, Microsoft Picture It, SR. I'm going to click on the print and cut and choose upload. When you print these, you're going to print these on glossy photo paper or presentation paper, whatever kind of paper you use. I use Kodak glossy photo all the time. All right. Next, you're going to click on that image and click insert. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the full label. 
Now, even though it looks like it has ridges in here, that's just the rendering inside of Cricut. It's going to look smooth as it looked in Microsoft Picture It. Now you want to resize this to 4 inches by 2 inches. If I wanted to, I could make it where it's exactly 2 by 4 and it won't change the appearance too much. I'll show you. Unlock it and just make this an even 4. And you see there's virtually no difference. So you want this to be 4 inches by 2 inches. And you can either put your wording in here if you wanted to while you're in Cricut. I prefer to do it in Microsoft Picture It because I can do all the extra fancy stuff I might want to do. Now I'll show you the original label and how I set it up to cut it so that I could cut multiple ones on one sheet of glossy photo paper. So I'm going to go to New and Replace and I'm going to go to My Projects and I'll scroll down and bring up how I set my labels up. Go to Customize zoom out and this is how I set my labels up so that I could print five on one page and as you can see when you click click on it the height is 8.426 and the width is 6.289 which is well within the parameters of a print and cut and if you wanted to make, these are the size for the small wine bottle. If you wanted to make it for the large wine bottle, I'm just going to unattach these by clicking detach, or I guess I should have said detach. And you just take one of your labels and you can stretch it out. I'll make it the maximum width of 9.25. And you see it, it makes it 9.25 inches wide and then 4.625 high. So some people remove the label that's on the wine. Some people just flip it around to the back and put it on the back. But it's really easy to resize these to fit any size wine bottle. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. Don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you want to be notified the minute I have up new tutorials, hit the bell and you'll be notified.